years, um, you see a lot. Um, you know, Caltrans to me is one of the best jobs I ever had. When I started, I was a young kid, didn't know nothing. As I went through the times growing up through Caltrans, um, I witnessed a lot. I've seen a lot of accidents. Um, a lot of things have happened. July 13th was a day last year that I'll never forget. <clears throat> I was working on the field on the on-ramp, basically, on Clark on-ramp, 91 eastbound, me and John Mead. And we just got finished doing the covert inspector, putting the camera up and putting the um, equipment on the back of the truck. <clears throat> and out of nowhere, um, you know, what runs through your mind all the time, you think that you would get, you know, injured on the freeway. Not literally on the surface street, but it will happen. You least expect it. And so by me standing right there, putting the um, equipment back on the truck, two cars crashed into each other. And before I knew it, I heard the screech. I turned around. I said, look out, John. And I was pinned between those two cars and the back of um, the work truck. I must have blacked out because I thought I was facing west, but I was facing east. When I realized I came through, John said, I came through, I pushed the vehicle off me. It came off some kind of way, and I grabbed the back of the truck, and I grabbed the vehicle, and I looked at John, and I said, John, help me. And John was in shock. I said, John, help me. Please help me. My leg is broke. I can feel it. And eventually, he snapped out of it. He grabbed me. And another bystander walked by, a Hispanic guy, grabbed me. They laid me on the ground. And as they laid me on the ground, um, I was in pain. And it was a pain that I never can ever forget. And I sat there and the lady was basically giving out instructions where it was at. And I literally picked up my phone. I have it off, unfortunately, right now. I turned it off. But I picked my phone up and I called dispatch. And I called dispatch and I had them immediately, please send me help because my leg was broke. And eventually dispatch came. Um, they hauled me off and took me to the hospital and found out that I had a broken femur. And that was one of the worstest pains I can imagine in my life. I have three things I want to tell Caltrans employees that I you know, go by and that I was just list, list, list thinking about. I call it the T, the L, the G. Basically, think, look, and go. Think about what you're doing first. Always try to just think about all the things that you need, your safety, your PPEs. Do the L. Before you get out your vehicle, look around. Check out your surrounding regarding to your escape routes. And um, know where your backup truck at. Stay in communication with your passengers who's around you. And the last one is go. Don't hesitate. Get out the vehicle. Go. Don't hesitate. The main thing we hear is screeching on the freeway. You hear it? Move. Get out the way for your safety and for the rest of anybody that's around with you. So do the TLG. I use that all the time. Um, when I was a lead worker in Altadena uh, for maintenance, we were at uh, on the 134 eastbound uh, San Rafael on-ramp, and we had everything right. We had our backup truck with our generator down and everything. Everything was correct. The on-ramp was closed. We had uh, signs on the main line with cones going all, all through. And uh, two guys, you know, and just happened to be EMT guys, uh, they, were, they were driving a, a small white uh, Toyota Camry, I believe and they were probably speeding in the number one lane and lost control, came skidding down, uh, sliding sideways. Uh, what I remember is just hearing uh, uh, the noise of, of a car sliding on the freeway and, and you always turn around to see who's gonna hit who and when, when I turned around the car's coming straight at me sideways and I had just cut down a tree that I was standing next to so if he would have come straight at me he would have wrapped around me and the, me and the tree and uh, what saved me was uh, the berm on the on the shoulder. That when the when the rear when the rear tires hit, it went airborne. Then the the front tires caught the berm and spun around, knocked down the light pole. And uh, and then it hit two of our employees that that were on the ground, one you know on, on their knees. And uh, that was I mean it looked like a war zone afterwards. So. Um, the car, the car came within inches from me spinning around. I had dirt in my face and my mouth, and and it was just uh, I didn't expect that, you know. To me, I thought that I got away from the car, like I was able to get away, but but in reality, I was gonna go where the car was going, spinning around, 
And then I think I just dropped my knee to the left, and, and the car missed me by, by inches. Um, they're all different on the fatalities. They're not too bad. Some have been real bad, real worse. You, you, you know, you see uh, stuff that you shouldn't be taking home. You know, you close your eyes, you can still see it. Uh, I'll give you an example. My, my worst uh, fatality until today, I, I, you know, it still bugs me. Uh, about three, what was it, three years ago, maybe four, I, we got called out right after a class like today. Uh, we're heading back to the yard, and we got a call out to shut the freeway down, uh, 405 northbound at uh, Sherman Way. And uh, a dad did a, a suicide run with his uh, three daughters in it. And uh, I wasn't expecting to see that. But, uh, you know, it was, just, it was a horrific view, uh, seeing the children, you know, impacted inside the car. Uh, due to the fact that I have two little ones as well at home. And uh, this is the stuff you see, you know, even though you don't want to see it. But, you know, it's part of the job. Best thing or best advice is just uh, uh, please drive safely. Um, don't text. Don't drink and drive. Um, be aware that you know we're out there trying our best uh, to keep the freeways maintained, cleaned. Um, you know we can only do so much, but we need you guys out there too. You know, don't don't drink and drive, don't tax, and uh, just drive safely, please. Well, being out on in landscape, we're out on the field a lot. We make a lot of uh, closure shoulders cause so we can do. Um, the landscaping so we're exposed a lot to cars on the freeway flying 70 80 miles per hour and um, sometimes we have closures where we have to close the ramp to do the landscaping and we have countless times where I can say that people come through the closures and people come in the shoulder closure I don't know if they're in a rush or if they lost but they they just come through and not apologetic just just come through because they want to get off this ramp at this time and right now and then they don't realize that we're using these mechanical tools that are loud we have earplugs on and our focus is on you know doing our job and when somebody comes into the closure it it it, it, it scares us because we have everything there to protect us we have the trucks you know, closing the ramp, the signs, the, the, the barricades, everything. And it, it just shaking, shakes you up when you realize that, you know, people can actually come through here 80 miles per hour. It's, it's really scary. So it's important for people to, uh, to just realize we're out there for them and us because we want to, to make the roads as safe as we can and also to beautify it. So if you are stuck in traffic that, you know, you see some, some beautiful landscaping. So just keep it in mind to, to pay attention to the cones and the signs and the arrow boards. And, and um, yeah, you may be inconvenienced for a minute, but think of how the life you would save if you just keep going to the next off ramp. The same thing I do when I'm at home or I'm driving somewhere and I see Caltrans or even city workers doing their job and I'm inconvenienced. I just smile and I say, oh wow, I gotta keep going somewhere else because that's somebody's father or mother or brother, sister, aunt or whatever and they wanna go home at the end of the day. Just like I make plans to do what I have to do, I know that these people wanna go home safely and they're doing their job. So let me be in compliance and just keep going. Okay. Yeah, I was on the sweeping crew and we were working nights. At the time, the sweeping crew was at night. So we were on the 10 freeway westbound by Overland. And it was still kind of early. It was around 1130 at night. And um, I was in the last backup truck, the Advance Warner. And I was watching my mirrors and I noticed this car was coming at me. It wasn't getting out of the lane. So 
I moved up a little bit to avoid him, to give him the person more room to get out of our lane, the number one lane. And next thing I know, I was hit. And it pushed the truck um, a little bit into the shoulder. And at the time, I, as soon as I got hit, I responded on the radio because we have CHP with us. So I told the crew and CHP I just got hit. And they're like, okay, we're bringing a break behind you. So there was a unit in the area, thank God. They were running a traffic break. The car that hit me came around me and decided it was going to come back into our train. So because I warned the guys and the sweeper operator got on his horn and was honking at the workers because they were on foot. So the car proceeded, I think he went in behind the sweeper in front of the CHP and um, the sweeper operator was able to get out of his sweeper in time because the car had nowhere to go and was able to get the keys out of the ignition and the CHP then got the driver and it was a joint effort and the CHP took the car to the shoulder and took the rest of us to the shoulder. The truck was still drivable so and I was in shock so I was like okay so I drove it to the shoulder and when I got out the attenuator box had been crashed, like smushed, um, in one of the corners, got hit really hard. So <clears throat> they found out that the driver was drunk and they arrested him. And I, I was lucky that I only got whiplash. And I didn't feel it till the next day because I was, the adrenaline was going. And we shut the operation down for the night, went back, and it, it was a wake up call just to know how dangerous our job really is out there. And if the public paid more attention to our cones, our flares, the lights, the rotators, the arrows, less things would happen out to us. Apparently uh, a guy had been stopped possibly by the sheriffs uh, a few miles back. I guess the somehow he got away from the sheriff and was speeding up and down the, the shoulder trying to get going westbound on the 105. Um, traffic was rush hour was kind of slow and apparently when he came upon us he decided to thread the needle between the slow lane of traffic and us on the shoulder and he sideswiped the front of our van knocked it over moved it over about three or four feet and we were standing at the back of the van trying to put some equipment together that's so all I remember hearing and seeing was a blur out of my off my left side and just watching the van shift over to the right and hearing crash because he also hit one of the, he also hit another vehicle that was uh, right next to us when he tried to go in between the slow lane and and us on the shoulder and he came to rest uh, about 30 feet 30 40 feet on the shoulder and ran up the the landscape to get away from the sheriffs the sheriff showed up and helicopters and stuff like that but we were still trying to compose ourselves from just being almost hit. Whether you pay attention to us or not on the side of the road, as far as us Caltrans workers, um, we do have families too to go back to. And we like to go home safely at the end of the day at all times. That's our main concern. So just being distracted or running late to work is not an excuse for driving when you're not paying attention, being distracted. They throw things at us. They would yell words out to us. They would yell choice words. They would throw from crushed ice to blocks of ice at us. Uh, they, they let their frustrations be made known. And the end of it though, our, our product, it actually increased visibility of each lane line. Um, it um, let drivers know where they're supposed to be and it enhanced driver safety. We're on the 210, westbound 210 near Yarnell. We were doing the uh, number one lane. We're dropping the markers, the reflective markers, and I saw headlights. But where we are, you normally see headlights, but they're normally on the other side going the opposite way. They're on the other side of the rail. Well, as we were moving around, the curve, I noticed that those headlights were getting closer and they weren't on the other side of the uh, 
the, uh, me the median wall. They were on our side. So um, we started making a lot of noise. We started making the calls. We had CHP with us. CHP zoomed around. Um, um, they were able to eventually catch the guy, but it was scary to have a guy traveling by you at 60 miles an hour going the opposite way. He was going to take out somebody, so uh, that was inevitable because it was this was a westbound freeway he was he was traveling eastbound on, so uh, CHP eventually got him. Well, you can never let your guard down. Um, uh, even if it's something that you think is, ah, uh, it's not going to get us, well, it can. It can happen to you. Um, when, that, when, when you see a car going by you at, at, at high rates of speed going the opposite way, flying right by you, you it changes your perspective on a lot of things. Well, we've been, we were rear-ended a bunch of times. I mean, most, most working crews have always have a, they have a rear end where they actually run into the attenuator. Um, that's common. So I, my feelings there, they were, they, they, be, they, they tend to wane because you have things that are, you have some that are oh, some semi-serious, then you have some that are serious. The ones that are serious are the ones you remember like yesterday. And the one I remember like yesterday was a car that flew by me the, the wrong way. I remember I was going down the 110 to the Silver Lake yard one day in the rain. It was pouring. And I'd seen five or six cars spun out. And they used to call it Ping Pong Alley. And the cars are just spinning out everywhere, and it's like you're going around an obstacle course just trying to get off the freeway. So, but no, I've had a couple of close calls of cars hitting you, you know, and I've been hit. So, uh, the day we got hit, we were doing a fence job on the eastbound 134 at San Rafael Bridge. So we had the ramp closed, and uh, we were working. Our crew was working. And I was uh, kneeled down working on the fence and doing the, taking the hog rings off the bottom guide wire that we're trying to remove the fence that had gotten hit from an earlier crash. And all of a sudden I looked up and I seen dirt flying and and next thing I know, I mean I got up and then next thing I know I'm laying out on the street out there on Colorado Bridge. So it's like the time I came, the, the time I got up and I seen just barely seen the car. Next thing I'm, land, I'm landing in the street on the bridge. So then uh, it was kind of dazed for you know for a little bit, and I see the paramedics rolling up, and then I asked the guy, "Was I knocked out or what?" He goes, "Oh no, we were just driving by and saw it happen, so that's why we just we seen it and we pulled right in."